pray. Dear Lord, our Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for the beautiful services we've had thus far. We thank you for an opportunity again tonight to hear your word and fellowship with your saints. We invite your presence in this place tonight. Please, oh God, come by here. In Jesus' name we pray. Let all the saints say amen. Amen. God bless you. you may be seated. Good evening, everyone. I'd like to bring a, just a few announcements to your attention. If, if you have a need of medical services, I'd like to give you a number. You may call for medical services, 256-726-7375. Uh, Please be ready to answer who you are, where you are, and what is the concern? Uh, if you need campus safety services, the number is also 256-726-7375. Please remember that every evening uh, after the evening services, we have communion uh, in the multi-purpose room south. That is to my left and your right, uh, multi-purpose room south. And uh, I would like to also remind you, if you don't have a booklet with the seminars posted uh, outside in the breezeway, you'll be able to see that all at, this, at your convenience. At this time, uh, Elder uh, Fred Batten has a few announcements for you as well. Pastor Batten. Good evening, everyone. Uh, we'd like to have the ushers to be able to share at this point in time some very important information that will uh, be of your interest for uh, next year. Uh, we will be having a very special celebration in regards to the 70th anniversary for South Central Conference. Come on, say amen here. Uh, we're going to be able to celebrate in a very positive way. So ushers are sharing those, that information out to you now. Uh, this is a bookmark, a very uh, wonderful bookmark you can place uh, in your Bible or your favorite reading material, and you can be able to uh, save the date and be ready for next year with this information. So we want to thank you so much for getting ready even now uh, for the great celebration 70 years of God using men and women, boys and girls in the, in the South Central Conference to share the gospel. Would you say amen today? Amen. amen. So we thank the ushers for sharing that at this time. And now we will have a special musical presentation uh, from the wonderful mass choir from Jackson, Mississippi. Why don't you welcome them uh, with a hearty amen.
Testifies that when the Holy Spirit is poured out, he brings with him a supernatural spirit of sacrifice and generosity. As our ushers prepare to come to collect our offering, we're praying tonight that the Spirit is here to infuse his people with a supernatural spirit of sacrifice and generosity as we give to the cause of God. Amen. Let us pray over the offering. Father in heaven, we just thank you that we can call on Jesus any time. We thank you for the gift of your Holy Spirit. Now as we return the gift of our monetary resources to your cause, bless it, stretch it, and use it in a way that we could never have used it had we kept it to ourselves. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. While we're in that spirit of generosity, someone has left their cell phone. If you know this to be your cell phone, see me. Let's do it one more time. Just want to praise you. Let's go. I just want to praise you forever, forever and ever, and ever and ever, and ever. Thank you, Jesus. 
just wanna praise Anybody feel like praising him? Forever. And ever. And ever. And ever. And ever. That's what's going to happen when you get to heaven. It's just going to be one big praise bar. For me. For me. Blessings and glory. Blessings and glory. everyone. I'd like you to stand with me as we approach the throne of our Father. Our Father and our God in heaven, we thank you for your presence in this place. We thank you, Father, for the blessings that you have given us this day. We thank you, Father, for you being God. Father, we come before you because we believe that you are God that you change not. We also believe that you cannot lie and you will not lie to us. Father, you have made a promise to us that you would give us your Holy Spirit. And we do understand there, Lord, that the gift is available to us today. Father, I pray that you touch our hearts, that touch our minds. Help us understand there, Lord, that you are giving us what we are very much in need of, the gift of your Holy Spirit. So tonight, dear Lord, we pray that you may give us a receptive heart. That this gift, dear Lord, we will accept it tonight. We will not leave this place, dear Lord, until we receive that gift. We accept that gift that you have given to us. Dear Lord, and we pray that if there is anything preventing us from receiving this gift, that you remove it, dear Lord. Change our hearts, change our minds, dear Lord, so we may believe your word. You said your word will go out and not return void. So help us, dear Lord, to trust your word. Dear Lord, we pray for the preacher this evening. Yeah. Uh, I, I know that he would have um, made an excuse that he has a death in his family, his loved one is dead. Uh, but he chose, dear Lord, to follow your guidance. You have given him a message for your people tonight, for us tonight. I pray, dear Lord, that we receive your message and that your message may transform us, dear Lord. We pray that you give him the power, the strength to proclaim your word tonight. And when we leave this place, dear Lord, where we, may we understand and believe that we were in your presence. Please continue to be with us. We in Jesus' worthy and precious name, amen. It's my privilege to have been asked by the speaker to introduce the speaker. 
Elder John E. Parker first is a native of South Central Conference, having been, having been born in Birmingham, Alabama. He then went away uh, to the Southeastern Conference where he passed in the Miami area, but like the prodigal, he returned home and, and began his ministry in the South Central Conference at the Breath of Life Seventh-day Adventist Church in Memphis, Tennessee. From, from there, he went to the Hillcrest uh, Seventh-day Adventist Church in Nashville, Tennessee. From there, he went to the Montgomery Maranatha Seventh-day Adventist Church. And from there, he went to his current assignment, the Jackson New Heights Seventh-day Adventist Church in Jackson, Mississippi. And those were his members responding enthusiastically uh, to their pastor. I've had the privilege of knowing Elder uh, Parker for a number of years, and, and there are several things that, 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 sh that jump out at me in introducing uh, and thinking of Elder Parker. Uh, one, of, one of them is he has a, he has a very strong hospital uh, visitation ministry. If you are going to into the hospital, you know that he's going to be there. I, I remember when my wife had surgery several years ago. The surgery was set for very early in the morning. We pulled up uh, about 7 uh, in the morning. I dropped my wife off to go in, and, and right behind my car was Pastor Parker uh, to pray for Mrs. Edmund before surgery. And, and he, doesn't, he didn't just do that because of the position I have. That's what he does. The, the, the thing, though, uh, the, the, the two things, uh, the two other things that I really appreciate even more than his visitation ministry is his enthusiasm. Uh, Pastor Parker does everything with enthusiasm. I like to preach at his church because if the Lord is blessing, Pastor Parker gets out his tie. He just, he whip, he, he just encourages you on with that tie. Um, but then, then Pastor Parker, is, one of the, the last thing that I really appreciate about Pastor Parker is he's genuine. Uh, he, he, he's real. Uh, one of, I tell the workers that the thing that I like least about this particular responsibility is the, 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 the requirement that the president hold the workers accountable. Uh, that, that, that means, I shared with them Friday, that that means sometimes I have to have some conversations with you that are uncomfortable for you, but you need to know they're just as uncomfortable for me. But those conversations have to be had because if the president doesn't have those conversations, then there's nobody who can have those conversations. The thing I like about Pastor Parker is his genuineness. Before I have to have any kind of conversation like that with Pastor Parker, Pastor Parker always comes to me first and says, Elder Edmund, this is what I need to fix, and I'm going to fix it, and he does. He's, he's married uh, to another one of our natives from South Central Conference. The pastor is, is Sister Parker here? Where's Sister Parker? And, and so, somewhere Sister Parker is here. Where is she? Very, very well. Very, very quiet sister. Uh, but very supportive of her husband. They have one son, JP. And JP is one of the musicians. There's JP over there. Very good. Very good. Pastor Parker, we appreciate so much your commitment to ministry in the South Central Conference. And we know you have a word from the Lord. So after the music from our choir, we know you'll listen very carefully and prayerfully to the one who God has chosen, Elder John E. Parker, pastor, New Heights Seventh-day Adventist Church, Jackson, Mississippi. May the Lord bless him and us as he speaks to us today.
to thank this combined choir from Jackson. Yeah, let's give them a hand clap of praise. I mentioned to them earlier the importance of not coming here just to sing, but to come here to minister. And there is a difference in the two. I want to thank my president and my friends for this invitation to be here with you this evening, for my colleagues in ministry, for those who have called to pray with me under the circumstances. My father passed on Tuesday. So on next week, next weekend, we will have his funeral. So I want you to keep my siblings and I in prayer. The reason I'm here, and I didn't um, want to cancel the responsibility because there was a word. Now, if you were not here this morning, uh, I will say this to you. The message was so potent and so powerful the devil almost came down to repent. <laughs> and that's a tribute to my colleague because he, had, he is anointed and appointed by God. And he came, he came here today on a mission for the king. I make no apology for the truth. And so I hope you can just indulge me for just a few minutes to share God's word with you. Father, take charge in Jesus' name. Amen. The theme is being filled with the Holy Spirit. Come Holy Spirit. My sermon is entitled, The Field and the seal. I invite you to turn with me to 2 Corinthians. What book? 2 Corinthians chapter 1, and we want to look at verses 21 and 22. Uh, that's 2 Corinthians, the first chapter, verses 21 and 22. I'm not going to keep you long, but I'm going to keep you long enough. Is that all right? I know it's been a full day, but I'm thankful that God has allowed us to be here to hear his word one more time. Second Corinthians chapter 1, and we want to look at verses 21 and 22. The word says, Now he which established us with you in Christ hath anointed us is God who hath also sealed us and given the earnest of the Spirit in our hearts. Ephesians 5 and verse 18. Ephesians 5 and verse 18. If you have it, say amen. Still trying to find it, say oh my. Ephesians 5, 18, the word says, And be not drunk with wine, wherein is excess, but be filled. Let me say that again until you get it. But be filled with the Spirit. Again, Father, this is your hour. In Christ's name, amen. amen. To feel comes from a Greek word, pleuron, which means to feel full. To feel full, so full that there is no room left. We are so filled with the Holy Spirit that it will squeeze out sin, forcing it to relocate. It also suggests the ideal of a vessel with the capacity to receive and to contain. 
To be filled with the Spirit is to be under the guidance, control, dominance, and power of the Holy Spirit. The words filled and full occur in the book of Acts on many occasions. But I want you to know and understand that these words are so potent and so powerful, but if we miss it, we're going to miss everything. I read to you early in Ephesians 5:18 it says, "But be filled with the Spirit." Luke 11:13 puts pens it this way: "The Holy Spirit is given to those that ask." John 14, 16, and 17 echoes these words. He shall give you another comforter. The reason for another comforter is because Jesus said, it's expedient that I go away. And in my going away, I will send you another comforter in my place. Meaning, now the Holy Spirit becomes the ubiquitous one. He can be everywhere at the same time. He becomes, our, he becomes our personal Jesus. It's important for us to understand that the role of the Holy Spirit in these days is very, very prevalent to the church. So it behooves all of us to pray. One writer puts it this way. We don't need to sit around and wait for the whole church to get revived. <laughs> Seeking the Holy Ghost is an individual thing. And, and it's something that you and I must take ownership and responsibility to seek God for ourselves. No one else, no one else can be filled with the Holy Spirit for you. you got to do it for yourself. Stay with me. For the Word says, for he shall dwell with you and shall be in you. The vast, there is a vast difference between having the Holy Spirit and being filled with the Spirit. You see, as church people, we can be around things pertaining to the, to the power of God and not be affected by the power of God. And there is a huge difference, thanks to God, because there may be a move of God taking place, but if there is no change in your life, that's the work of the Holy Spirit to produce change. So when we are filled, stay with me, when we are filled with the Holy Ghost, the Spirit responds to our deep need. That's number one. He does what? He responds to our deep needs. You and I have specific needs in our lives that only the Holy Ghost can remedy. Now, it, it, it's, it's documented. We come to church. We come in our pain. We come with all of our issues, but being in the house of God, you're in the right place to get the healing that you need. You don't need to lay out on a sofa to talk to somebody. You're paying them $150, $150 an hour to go back in your past telling you what's wrong with you. What you need is an experience with the Holy Ghost. You need an encounter with God that would turn your world around because every need that you have, the Holy Spirit already knows what you need. And he's prepared to deal, to give you that. Number two, we receive the Spirit proportionate to our asking. So if you are not willing to make a sacrifice to receive him, then that's only the power you're going to receive. So if you want the fullness of the Spirit, You've got to be willing to make the sacrifice to get that Spirit of God. Number three, each day that we operate, we must operate from the fullness of God. We must do what? Operate from the fullness of God. Being Spirit-filled simply means your life is surrendered under the direction and the control of the Holy Spirit. And when that happens, saints of God, there are two tenses, there are two moods that you need to be mindful of. Number one is the imperative mood. What kind of mood? The imperative mood. So when you have a sense of urgency about the Holy Spirit, this word says the need is urgent. That means nobody else can do it for you. You got to do it for yourself. So it's an urgent need. It's long overdue. But then there's the passive voice which indicates that the surrendered will and the, the yielded body is emptied so that the Holy Spirit can do his work. 
Now, it's imperative that we understand, saints of God, that the Holy Spirit wants to work in your life in a powerful way. But what's happening is we have grown content. And because we have grown content, we don't feel the need and the urgency to have more power to live by. I want to make it plain today. The Spirit is ready to be poured out. Have you not noticed that the people are slow in terms of coming to prayer meeting? Don't get quiet now, I'm building. They're, they're very slow about coming to prayer meeting because there is no urgency. See, you have to have a sense of urgency to know the times in which we are living. And if there's no urgency, then people are going to bypass prayer meeting. Come on, help me, somebody. Drag it into Sabbath school. We're barely there. We find every reason not to show up on time. But when there is a concert, when there is a concert, we will knock the doors down to get into the place. It doesn't matter what the ticket costs, we're going to be right there to get our praise on. And I want to tell you something. Praise does not replace obedience. <laughs> because, see, the devil has us on this thing now that we can praise our way through. If that were the case, then the devil would have a front row seat. But there are two problems we deal with if we're going to be filled. Number one, we have a vessel shortage. Stay with me. Second Kings, can I get that bottle of water, please? Second Kings 4, 1 through 7. I want to walk you through this, and then I'm going to take my seat. What book? Second Kings chapter 4. And I want you to look at this with me. Thank you. Second Kings, chapter 4, verses 1 through 7. If you have it, say amen. Second Kings 4, 1 through 7. Let's read what the word says. Now there cried a certain woman of the wives of the sons of the prophets unto Elijah, saying, 